The cripple and the blind. The blind has the cripple come onto my shoulder so we can walk a path away. Hey, look down there, there's some guy there. Who is that? Oh, non lo so. Chi è quel uomo? Ma è strano. Ha una barba lunghissima, ha degli occhi azzurri meravigliosi, ha dei capelli lunghi. Ed è circondato da un sacco di gente che gridano, che lo acclamano, che lo applaudono. Who is he? Hey, what's the matter? What's happening? Only people who pass by have to pay in this city. Those who are sitting down, they don't have to pay anything. Tonight is the crazy night. Let him go. Who is it? Oh, a Jesus, a Gesù, a Signore nostro is God himself. Oh, keep away from him. He's a nut guy, he's mad. If he does a couple of signs, he makes you alive again and you can walk and I, you can see. I don't want to do that. Don't let me go any near him. No, don't let me. Don't let me go close. Stay close. Why? Why don't you want? But you crazy. We have to start working. We are not blind and crippled anymore. We have to start working. We are not blind and crippled anymore. That guy is mad. Go away. Go away. Who 
chercheur de canel à Belfacolo, je ne ne fais pas de radio, je ne sais pas mon seigneur, je ne sais pas je ne sais pas de
ten hallo Oh for colors yak and fear oh with nine motor joe Migliaia e migliaia Ancora non si sa Dove la storia porterà Solo camminando per le vie Solo ridendo della vita, non c'è storia che ci appartenga, solo a Dio è comandato illuminare la nostra via, ma lo scherzo è il gioco. Sono parte dell'umana fantasia. Credi a me, quante volte sei stato cieco anche tu. Credi a me, quante volte sei stato vecchio anche tu. Ma non basta, non importa se davvero tu non credi a me. Vieni e portami con te sulle spalle del nostro sogno, del nostro sogno. Vai. Come on. 
Mistero Buffo Night by Dario Fo, comic mystery play, Mistero Buffo, lo spettacolo scritto negli anni 60 da Dario Fo. Quello che avete sentito adesso, what you just heard, is been going on for centuries. It was told in the streets, in the square, for centuries. It's the spiritual tradition of the human people, of the people of the ordinary people that uh, feel about religion. This, uh, The, this story that has been told in front of, before churches, davanti alle chiese per centuries, and then only in the late 17th century, all these stories were banned for to be told in front of the, before the churches on public square, for political reasons that has nothing to do with faith and, uh, and religious anyway. The first story that I would, these two stories that you just heard is the, Just one, sorry, is the story of the blind and the crippled, cioè il cieco e lo storpio. L'avete sentito, forse non so se avete capito, if you did understand all the words, but it's the story of, the, it's a very idea of the, of the public the, to know how to uh, manage uh, to get away with, to get some money every day by being blind and being crippled. And of course, when the situation changes with the approaching of Jesus, these two people get really worried. But there is a lot of metaphor inside it. Even today, we don't want to see, and we don't want to walk around. But we don't want to see, we don't want to see all the things that are happening. We prefer to turn away our head, you know? And even when someone comes and tells us and try to open our eyes, strangely enough, we still don't want to see. And we don't want to take action about what's happening. One of the first stories that I like to introduce you, one of the prime stories, I don't know why I'm doing this in English and Italian. I suppose that you don't, old folks, do you understand all Italian? Yes? All of you? Tutti e capite l'italiano? Please raise your hand. Big, eh? Tutti, quattro. The, so I'm forced to do it a kind of. Uh, Uh, it's Quenoa language, like a bit of uh, English and a bit of Italian. And I don't know if I will be able to, because for um, comical reason, perhaps it won't work very well. I will start in the original language which this monologue was wrote some time ago. So this first story that I would like to tell you is a story of the year 1000, and it was found, like many of these stories, by chance in the 60s by four and some uh, people who were researching about tracing down the uh, tirare giù la cultura uh, così religiosa popolare di uh, secoli e secoli di, di appartenenza e di vita. Questa storia è stata trovata nel cimitero monumentale di Pisa uh, nel, appunto, ed è una storia del mille, dell'anno mille, of the year 1000, of the 11th century. And it's a story of the miracle a great miracle, Lazarus, un miracolo di Lazzaro. Don't know if you, se voi avete mai eh, sentito questa storia del miracolo di Lazzaro, noi che siamo, io che sono italiano, sono stato cresciuto fin da bambino a dottrina, a studiare, proprio conoscere i miracoli, i precetti della dottrina e mi insegnavano sempre questa storia del miracolo di Lazzaro. Miracolo di Lazzaro che avviene, come voi sapete, Lazzaro è morto, seppellito in una tomba, bendato, come si usava allora in Palestina, e a un certo punto ecco che si presenta Gesù. Gesù che fa quei famosi tre colpi sopra la tomba, si spalanca il tombone, Lazzaro esce, si sveste rapidamente e tutti che vanno a bere e a mangiare tre giorni avrà avuto una fame dalla Madonna, come minimo. 
e fin qui quello che è la tradizione ufficiale. L'altra fatta, l'altra faccia invece della storia è quella raccontata dal popolo. Ma perché il popolo aveva bisogno di discutere queste tesi che erano assolute? Un miracolo è un miracolo, basta, silenzio, non si discute. Ma perché il popolo era... Pensate nel terzo secolo dopo Cristo, pensare a uno che tirava fuori uno morto, che con tutta la scienza oggi che noi abbiamo, scusatemi, ma tirare fuori uno morto da tre giorni, mi spiace ma lì non c'è scienza che tenga, lì ci vuole una fede proprio, una fede cieca proprio, che non ammette discussioni, che non si interroga mai, ma il popolo aveva fede ma si interrogava sempre su certi fatti. Un altro aspetto che poco è studiato e poco conosciuto è perché Gesù risuscita Lazzaro, è la prima volta, si era sempre rifiutato, Gesù non voleva mai risuscitare, potete immaginare quante volte gli capitava che gli portavano caro Gesù vieni ti prego c'è il figlio di un mio carissimo amico sta malissimo fai qualcosa e intervieni non posso non posso fare queste cose mi chiedete sempre delle cose veramente in amicizia ma io non posso io ho il mio percorso da fare Gesù ti prego non... anche per far vedere che sei una persona che riesce a fare non mi interessa o mi credono sulla parola buonasera o mi credono sulla parola oppure non se ne fa niente era proprio uno fissato ma qui stavolta Gesù non può rifiutarsi perché chi va a morire non è una persona qualunque si tratta di Lazzaro e Lazzaro chi è? è un parente stretto della famiglia di Gesù vive in casa con Gesù, con i fratelli, con le sorelle sapete che Gesù aveva una famiglia piuttosto allargata e quando questo Lazzaro muore oltretutto Lazzaro non è una persona normale è un uomo di una bontà incredibile è adorato dalla mamma di Gesù gli vuole un bene nell'anima è come un figlio per lei e quando Lazzaro muore in casa di Gesù è un disastro un finimondo la mamma non ne vuole più sapere non mangia, non beve, non dorme e, e, e sta in uno stato veramente di, come tragedia greca proprio una specie di piangere, si tira i capelli e, e, e tutti in casa la famiglia di Gesù sono preoccupati cioè, co cosa facciamo? Che cosa facciamo qui? Adesso ci manca solo che si sente male anche lei, bisognerebbe fare qualcosa, dice un altro dei fratelli, ma che cosa? Bisognerebbe andare a chiamare Gesù, eh già, a chiamare Gesù, non era mica una cosa semplice, eh? Gesù era un tipo piuttosto che si alzava sempre presto la mattina, partiva lui con quegli altri 10, 11, 12 che erano e non lasciavano mai detto dove andassero. Guarda, era proprio un fissato terribile. Finalmente domandano intorno, fratelli, scusate, avete visto per caso Gesù? Did you see where Jesus went? Yes, I saw him. He was passing by. Eh, 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 devo parlare un po' in inglese perché vedo che non raccogliete tutte le battute. Ho già detto tre battute come che non avete fatto una sola risata. So I have to speak in English because you don't laugh at my jokes. So, uh, and I said it properly. Eh? I, didn't, I didn't make any mistake. So it's just you that you don't... Uh, anche voi siete qua, ciao Ma perché non venite qua? mettetevi di qua se sono nelle sedie io non posso ho dei glutei molto belli però insomma davanti sono meglio anche in inglese si dice gluteus è vero? è bello no? gluteus i ricchi li chiamano gluteus i poveri chiappe abbiamo due lingue diverse una per i poveri e una per i ricchi vedi com'è il mondo Vabbè. comunque dicevo a un certo punto si accorgono they see that Jesus uh, they ask about some people Did you yes we saw him about an half an hour ago he was passing by we walked with some of the people he, they, he was going down there uh, so rapidly everybody follow up uh, the indication they arrived there and there he is up on a hill He was there delivering the famous discourse of the mountain. You remember the famous discourse of the mountain, no? And when they arrived there, they tried to get his attention, but they understand that something is happening. 
In fact, around Jesus, there is a crowd all sitting down, a thousand people around him, drinking words from his lips. They're trying to, to talk to him, but they stop because they're under, in fact, beside Jesus, a woman nearly collapsed before him. And then another man next to him collapsed and said, what's happening here? Why these people? And Jesus, it's three days that we are following you without having anything to eat. Oh, well then. Do I have to say everything, even to have a picnic? Come on, let's get down. Let's get going. Let's get a picnic. Come on, quickly. Come on. I saw someone. Have you got a piece of bread? Uh, sorry, Jesus, we haven't. Uh, yes, I have a piece of bread. Come on, give it to me. Quickly, break the bread. In this. And anybody else have something to eat? Uh, like, uh, well, uh, so disgraced, like the Palestinians, very few people are in the world. They, they didn't carry anything with them. But Jesus did not discourage and ask around, please, have you got some salami, some cheese, some dry meat? No, we haven't got any of these things. From the far end of the group, a voice rang out loud, Hey, I've got a fish! Now, can you imagine someone going up on a mountain for three days with a fish in his pocket? <laughs> and, in fact, the poor guy was left alone, a little bit alone. So, but Jesus did, didn't care. He threw me the fish, threw me the fish, got the fish, break the fish into, put everything into a little basket there, then ask around, please stand back, folks. Then, and then he lift up the basket, shake it up, Toss it everything up into the air, a cascade of sandwiches, a fish without any of the fish bone, all wrapped up in a salad with the same. Everybody was shouting, Well done, Jesus! Jesus! Well, what a lovely religion is this! So, at that point, <laughs> At that point, uh, they understand that everything is over. They walk up to Je Jesus. Hey, Jesus, please. <laughs> Jesus! Is this is one? Lazarus is dead. Oh Christ, says Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> then Jesus adjusts his halo and walks down and arrives there and does what we know as the miracle of Lazarus. Now the situation. How does it happen in a cemetery? Where else a miracle can take place? In a cemetery, early, early, the, everybody knows that here is going to be something really big going on. And everybody comes very early in the morning. They try to get in into the cemetery. And so, uh, but it's not easy to get in. It's not like here, that you just sit and so on without the, No, the, the guy uh, makes billet. He likes to have money. He asked money to the people to get in, and the people get offended. What's, what's the matter? Are you crazy? Even we have to pay even the city. I don't care, he says. I am the caretaker of this place. You come here, you squash all the grasses. Then you sat on the crosses, you banned all the crosses. And in the end, you steal all the candles, two coppers. Otherwise, you can go away, go into another cemetery. I like to see if there is a magician like the one that we have with a couple of signs mixed. Dead body comes out as if they were mushroom. Go on, go, go on. I don't care, woman, get, get out. Get out, I don't care if you are a woman. Uh, women must come here. I, the little one, half a copper. I don't care if he doesn't understand. When he will be grow up, you will tell him, and so you were so stunned, and you didn't understand anything. And on the best bit of the miracle, you wee on my, on my things as well. Get out, two coppers and a half. Come on, get back. Stand back, you. What's the matter? Don't cry too much. Don't, please, please. Why, why you make all this mess? He gets a bit nervous. Everybody comes around pushing him and everything, and he be he loses temper and he starts slapping on children and women on their faces, you know. Children and women in the Middle Ages, they were treated almost like today. <laughs> and then someone comes from behind, from the, hey, okay, Montagnan people, <laughs> you never saw a miracle, eh? You got nothing to do up on the mountain. <laughs> I don't come here for the miracle, no. I come for all the laughter that these people are making me. <laughs> and then someone else come and he picks up a chair and he sent to the people, hey you, get a chair, two penny for a chair, sit down comfortably. It's very, woman, it's very dangerous to see a miracle standing up. When the 
when the magician comes, he does a couple of signs, and Lazarus comes out with all his eyes straight forward, with his hair right up, you catch such a fright, you will fall off, bang your head on a stone, on a big one, dead, once, and the saint does only one miracle per day. <laughs> oh, very good. Come here. Oh, you got a chair, you little blood. Come on, go. hey, don't be careful. Don't lean on my shoulder. I push you right into the grave. Then I put a lid on top of it and do 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 eternum. <laughs> Stand back. Don't come. Please, woman. I don't care if you are a woman. I already said. All right? Before that, we are all equal. <laughs> Stand back. Hey, what's happening? Who is scared? Don't push me, Bob. There is an empty grave. I fell in. Then Jesus came. Alive, alive. I was already alive. <laughs> Stand back. Hey, Papa. Ma che perché? Adesso mi devo girare un po' di là. I'm sorry, I have to turn a little bit. And then comes someone else with a parcel. Fish, a cup, a bag of fish, two penny for a fish and chips. Get a fish and chips, two penny. Hey, you, fish sellers, give a fish back to Lazarus. He prepare his belly. <laughs> Shut up, you blasphemous. Stand up. Don't come. Look, what's happening? There, there they are. Oh, look at him. I know him. Look, the apostles, no. Yes, that one, that one is John. Oh, look at him, what a lovely hair. Look at the other guy, look how nice. The one that's accompanied with John, hey, Mark! Hey, Mark! <laughs> I know him. It's my next door neighbor. Hey, look at that. Look at him. Look at that guy. Look how nice he is. Who is he? Very nice. Who is he? Judas, a nice one. <laughs> there he is. There. Look at him. That is Jesus. No. Yes, I know him. I saw him when he was born. Look at him. I know him, but it can't be. It can't be him. He's only small. He's a little. Look. It doesn't. No, I say that is him. But I imagine Jesus, such a huge guy with a big head, two big eyes, teeth as such, with that, that when he was making a blessing, he will cut into four pieces the faithful. <laughs> hey, Jesus! Come on, can you do us another time a miracle? The one of the fish and the bread it was so good. What a feast we had. Shut up, you blasphemers. Can't you stop thinking about food? Always about food you are. Well, before death I'm always hungry. Stop it. Shut, shut. Be careful. Silence. Jesus just told everyone to go on your knee. Bend on your knee. Everybody go on your knee. I don't believe and I won't go on my knee. You don't believe you. You are lighting my strike. You down. Boom. Scratch off your legs. Then go walk up to Jesus and ask Jesus, please, a miracle for me. No. Another light. It's one. Your arm too. Stand by. Stand by. Be careful. Jesus just command, gave a order to lift up the lid of the thumb. Come on. Come on, everybody, help me up. So, Forza, Dai, Tirasu, Hoi, Lift up. Please, come on. Uh, would you give me a hand? I have a big turn. Ciao. No, a hand. I say, if you help me. Hey, give me a hand. I thought he was giving me some money. Come on, lift up the lead. Forza, Tirasu, Hoi, Push, Hey, Hoi, be careful! Be watch out your feet! Oh my god, that what a stench comes out not for, from this grave. What a stench comes out from the no, don't do it. It's dangerous. This grave, look at that. What's happened? Oh, what a disaster. Look, they said that, that Jesus was they said that Lazarus was buried in three days, but this is Almost a month has been in the grave. What a joke they play on him. What kind of joke? What, what's happening? But don't you understand? He won't make it. 
what? It won't make the miracle. Why not? But it's too rotten, the damn body. No. No, I think I'm sure he's going to do it just as well. It's enough that he will look up at the sky, his father, God, and he makes, he, he comes, uh, uh, be careful. Wait a minute. No, no, a stone was coming down. God, <laughs> another one. <laughs> he looks up at God and uh, with a sign over the grave and Lazarus comes out from the grave with his bone and blood fixing everything and he will sing the hallelujah running away in the field <laughs> Sang the hallelujah. Are you making fun of me? You are a joker. Don't you believe? Should we ever bet? Half a penny that is going to make it at once at the first strike. I won't take a bet. Two coppers that is going to make. All right. Three copper for me. Four. Four. It doesn't make one. Five. Five. A shilling. Get down. I'll take them. I'll take them. No, see, quick, quick, quick. A right contact. Say, no, I don't want to know. Hey, please, Sophia, stop it. You blasphemous. With God, with Jesus praying on his knee. And you are making a bet. Aren't you ashamed? Four shilling for me that is going to make it. You bastard. Hey, watch out. Jesus just said, come out, Lazarus. <laughs> yes, all the worms will come out from his dead body. No, look, look. Hey, watch out. Look, it's, it's moving. Look, it's falling. It's raising up. No, it's falling down. Look, it's coming out. It's come out like a dog coming out from the water. It's geek. Hey, you, be careful with all those worms all over me. Oh, oh magnifico. Oh, Jesus. He's alive. He made it alive. Oh, Lazarus is alive, Jesus. I did not know. I did not believe. I didn't know, Jesus. He's alive. Bravo, Jesus. You made him alive. Yes. He... Four shilling for me. I won. Yes, Jesus. Bravo, Jesus. A thief. Uh, my purse. A ladro. Purse. A thief. Bravo, Jesus. A thief. Bravo, Jesus. A thief. Bravo, Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, it was better in English, eh? <laughs> yes, because it's difficult. They don't understand the, the Italian. I'm not that kind of fanatic guy of the languages. I believe that people should understand, you know, what you are going to represent. So it's no point in sticking to uh, fixing idea, no? when uh, you don't understand the language. For me, it's a frustration. Uh, those people, those singers who sing so beautiful, those songs, and I have to get it translated by, by Giuseppe because I couldn't understand a word, you know? And it's frustrating. You might enjoy the melody or whatever, but I mean, if you understand the words, it's much better, don't you think? I mean, it's like going to, with a beautiful woman. That she doesn't speak your own language. No, uh, no, no, I don't agree. Yes, for, for one day, two days, three days. But then if you don't understand when she speaks, I don't think it's that nice, isn't it? Anyway, but uh, this metaphor, because it's so full of beautiful women, so it just uh, makes me... <laughs> Where are they? And there too, they are, no, they're, they're gone, all gone. No, there is someone, but they're all gone. <laughs> so the other, it's still me to go on now, Giuseppe, yes? The other story I would like to tell you now is uh, 300 years after this first piece that you heard. Oh, my goodness. Uh, has anybody heard? Please call the ambulance right away. No? Is everybody safe? Watch out. Watch out glasses. The story that I like to tell you now is uh, a story of the 15th century, the uh, late 15th century. 
and it is uh, about a, a hunger, a fame, a form. Come si dice in Maltese fame? Julie? Eh? Gior. 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 Pensa che roba. Gior. Gior. Senti. Hungry. Fame. Gior. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's an onomatopoeic. Yes? Fame is something that gets your guts, no? And in fact, all the sounds of the word fame that I experimented in the language in the world are always very hard, very harsh, very sharp, really proprio una, something really fame, appunto, fom, joh, hunger, hungry. This is a hunger, it's called this story, the hunger of the Zani. Zani is a, a typical northern Italian name of, to indicate a peasant. It's a nickname, of course. It's like you, uh, the English, British people have John. Uh, I learned that here you have Johannes. Johannes, something like this. So the John, the English John, is like the Zani. Zani is an invented name. Zani stands for Juan, Joan, Javan, Zan, Zani. Zani is a peasant. All over Italy, in, in those days, the, uh, the peasant were nicknamed Zani. So this Zani is having a, something happening to him that he, he probably didn't realize it was going to happen anyway because he was too busy to work his land and to make a living to understand what was going on some 200 kilometers uh, uh, from him in Venice. We are at the moment when the Republican Serenissima de Venezia owns much of the land. His borders arrive 25 kilometers from Milan. Just imagine all the side of the Adriatic Sea on the other side, all the way to Turkey and into the Indian, all the island in the Mediterranean Sea were belongs to the Republica Serenissima of Venice. An incredible power which arises a lot of jealousy in other countries in Europe, such as French, uh, Spain, Germany, and Austria in those days. So what's happening? This uh, Venetian uh, people, something new uh, appeared in Italy in those days, something that nobody ever thought about it. Um, not just in Venice, uh, but also in Florence, in Milan, and in uh, Genoa. It's the first time that we come to know about this new way of uh, using the mer, the market is the invention of modern capitalism. <laughs> it's funny, sometimes when I go abroad, I can see people, they look at me strangely. Are you sure? <laughs> she or he said to her, what was he talking about? The capitalist was born in Italy. Well, what do you want? He's a comic, a comedian. What do you want him to say? They don't believe? Yes. Modern capitalists start off in Venice, Florence, Milan, and Genova. It's the first time that are not the prince, the king, the bishop, the popes who organize expedition throughout the seas, but are directly the bankers. The bankers who are invented in those days and with the well-off citizens bringing their money into the banks and permit the bank to organize uh, without any control, of course. We are in the 15th century. So. Today is much different, isn't it? There is a hell of a lot of control. <laughs> and uh, the bank organizes expedition, and they go everywhere, and they bring goods, uh, food, lots quantity of food into Venice. They sell it off into the market of the north, Austria, Balkanic region, and so on. And all the peasants uh, nearby, but not just nearby, uh, they are completely uh, in. Uh, is, Eh? A banker. Uh, in fact, it was a bit bad. Eh? They have a special walk, the bankers. Did you notice? Yes. It's always trying to avoid knife on the back <laughs> or, or shooting uh, by someone. Uh, so the, the, they organize this expedition and they bring this good, and it's a disaster. The Zani, the peasants who are there working every day on their land, all of a sudden, they cannot sell their products. They cannot sell their goods. Oh, they are not. Why? What's happening? They are not good anymore. 
What does happen? A beast, a, a rotten worm has destroyed all the weed and all the seeds? No, no, nothing so catastrophic. Simply they are not competitive anymore. There is no possibility to compete. How can they compete? The Venetian don't pay the goods. They have their own land. They bring it in and they make the stock exchange. It's in Venice. It's not New York, London. It's there where all the prices of the goods and the food are made. And they make their own way. And all the peasants around, they are starving to death. And here is a disaster. And in between of this disaster, what's happening? A nice war. Couldn't there be no war in a situation like this? Yes. And who's going to pay in the war? The peasants, the Zanni. So it's a disaster. They have to flee the countryside. They have to go away, run away. Uh, thousands and thousands of them are literally buried in huge fosse, come si chiamano oggi, queste fosse comuni, because there was no time to make an appropriate grave for everyone. Historians have said that there was something like 60,000 of these families and Zani dead of starvation or starving to death. And another 80,000 are fleeing the, fi the fields. And that, where they are going? To Venice, of course. The only possibility to save themselves. You might think, uh, oh, well, it's the same people, isn't it? Are you joking? The Venetian people with the Zani in the countryside? Oh my God. It was like moon and sun, completely different. They were talking in a different way, dressing in a completely different style, eating in absolutely, when it was possible, in a different way, and absolutely, completely different way. They were making love to each other. So completely two distinct people, separated folks. And they arrived there in something like 80,000. Venice in those days was 120,000 people. Today, Venice has 35,000 people. It has become a Disneyland of the world. It's a complete disaster. And you Maltese people, I warn you, you are looking dead on their way. You're looking around your beautiful town. I, I don't know what was gonna happen in 10 or 20 years, but it doesn't look so bright to me. All these beautiful and magnificent buildings around in front of the coast of the port are leaving their place for big buildings, apartments. I don't know how can you... Uh, well, I, I hope you, you do something about it because uh, we try to stop this in Italy. It's very difficult, but it's always a big fight. But you have to stand up for this. If you want to keep a conservation of this beautiful city as it is, uh, you better move yourself, otherwise it will, it will be lost. All the, all the, the, the face, and it will, be, it will go. The money, the bankers, they don't have respect for anything as such as beauty, art, culture, or anything. They only think about putting money into the pocket. So I don't know how, it's a big fight. I know it's uh, quite difficult. But anyway, um, now I forgot where I was. Yeah, I know I was at Zani, but where? Oh, where was I? Eh? Ah, okay, good, thank you. No, I, I'm making this trick all the time to see if you are there. <laughs> there, go to Venice, and uh, obviously they do all the work that is left for them. For this, uh, ciao, come uh, uh, stai? I know him, he's a singer, he was here last night. He's a good, uh, good man, good singer, eh, vero? Non mi hai riconosciuto? Ah, non era lui, mi sono sbagliato. È lui, no? E sto io. Oh, Cristo, I miss, I mistake. I, I thought he looked very much so. And his smile as well was the same. Okay, never mind. So this Zani is hunger, he's, he's starving. He's lucky that he's going to end up dead like most of his colleague, most of his brothers and sisters. And he's in the middle of the field and he's so caught up in a nightmare. I've heard that uh, hunger, hum, is something can produce uh, so much pain that uh, very few pain on this, uh, uh, like the, the hunger can do to a human being. So this guy is full of pain. Of, of, and he has a nightmare and he thinks that he can eat and he's got no possibility to eat. 
and he thinks that he's got, uh, he, he, can, he can eat the sea and the, and the ships and, and the sailor on the ship. Then he, he starts eating the sky and everything. Then he pulls one ear and he eats an, an, an eye. Then he gets one of the gluteus, the cap, and takes it out, put a hand in the, between the gluteus and eat it. And then puts a hand inside uh, his uh, stomach and he brings up all the entrance, cleans it up. He's a peasant, but he's educated. And then uh, begins to eat it with, like that. And then he found himself in a big kitchen and he started doing what we call it the couscous of the north of Italy, the polenta. He makes a huge polenta, mice of water and steel, then he makes another pan and he puts some uh, meat inside, then another pan, he gets hold of a chicken, he kills the chicken, puts the chicken into the pan, then roast everything and throw everything into the big pot and then swallow it down as a huge mangiata, una, una fiesta, una, uh, of uh, Rabelais-like style. So the hunger of the sun. Hi, hi, che fame, che fame, yum! Oh, hunger, what a hunger I am. I'm so hungry, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving to death, I'm falling down, I'm dying, moro, moro! Magnaria l'aire! Oh, Magnaria il cielo, la luna, il sole, le stelle! Oh, Magnaria tutto! Oh, Magnaria anche il mare! Oh, il mare, the sea, with all the ship and the sailors, I could take the captain first. Oh, with all the hat, I will eat everything. And you, the moon, I could eat the moon. And the sun, oh no, why they embrace each other. Oh, what a hunger. Oh, che fame, che gioia. What is this lingua per terra? I'm swearing I couldn't even found a worm that I could eat, a piece of grass, nothing. I'm so starving. Oh, and good for you, God, that you are far away. I could eat you too with all the hill around yourself and all the cherubims that are flying around. Oh, oh, the family, oh, the family, che mi sfrocca tutto il cuore, e si sraccopra tutto. Oh, bagnaria un toro, I could eat a bull, with killing with a fart, get it all from high, get it down with the tail too. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, la che fame che tengo. Boia, mi si soccaria. Ma cavario neucio, guarda. Mi ucciceria come fu esso neucio, mi strapparia un'oreggia, me la mangiaria. Ce la paria fuori una ciapa, l'altra ciapa, metteria una mante dentro, faria un paninon grande, me la mangiaria tutto per intrego. Oh, la che fame. Oh, che fame! Oh, so che... Oh, non mi sei... Oh, che... Mi strapparia un coio, più l'altro coio, più, 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 e più, più, il pisello, tu, più, più, anche quello mi mangiaria. Oh, che franzica! Oh, da me infilciaria una mano, da dentro la pancia, allo stomaco, lo schio... Lo... 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 Oh, oh, la buzeca, oh, 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 toch, oh, my ass, a buzeca cool, oh, 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 che schivio, oh, quanta merda che c'è dentro qua, oh, a lot of shit, how come, is a week, more than a week that I don't eat, where is those, all this shit coming from, oh, pure, pure, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, get well. oh, for the seat. Ah, 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 Look how many people. <laughs> so nice, huh? I could just see one of you. Maybe touching one of the most softer of you. Uh, you are afraid, aren't you? 
ora ho fame che segno, ora ho zine qua, ora ho anche il paio che... Oh God, what am I? What's a kitchen? A kitchen, a cucina! Una cucina, a kitchen! But il fuoco, il fuoco, il fire! Give me the fire! Where the shua? Why c'è il pentolum, a big pot? L'acqua, the water! A bit of salt! La canela, a stick! Dai, amore, vai a zira tutto quanto! Vai che la bella mola, moresina, vai! Vai, a bit of mai! Now, subito, a fare una bella farina, la flower! Dai, miscia, miscia, mischia, mischia, mixa, vai che bello, look at it, look, it's boiling, oh, it's boiling, oh, bloop, 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 it's boiling, a bit more of flour, vai, pshu, pshu, no, oh, the package went inside, oh, my, but non mi importa, well, let him inside, it's even better, oh, all food flour, oh, yeah, yeah. Farina integrale, guardi, ma che bello! Oh, ma che bella! Oh, c'è che dire! Vai subito, fai un altro fuoco! Another fire I want to make! Oh, fire! A fire, un fuoco, metto un fuoco, bello che fa il fuoco, un'altra padella, chi? Vai su, a bit of oil, glu, 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 glu. Vai, un poco di gallo, un poco di scigola, un peverun, un sarasin, un bel caperin di malta, eh? Srisa, oh, sì, sì. vai che si, oh, gira, oh, io, I can't leave it, you can't really leave the flower, otherwise it will stick to the pan, you won't ever get it out, it's terrible. You have to stare it all the time. Why? Sure. Oh, sure. A bit of meat now. Get me a bit. Oh, that's a nice piece of meat. No? You don't want to. You came right in the right word. I got to take a bit of meat from here and put it down. Then a knife. Yeah, that sounded a bit offended. It was just a joke. Yeah, yeah. It's not so funny to, to have people coming by. You said that it's fun. My finger. Il mio dito, ho tagliato il dito, ho tagliato il dito, mi chiudo, ah, 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 oh, oh. Wow, che bello, la carne tutto in la padella, metto qua dentro, fa, frigge, frigge, boia, gira, gira tutta la farina, guarda che bontà, bella che la carne, ah, c'è now a bit of wine, yeah, 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 oh, oh, pshaw. oh, no, all onto the ground, oh, my God, please do, oh, do prof, what can you say, because it's a disaster, because you, zero, this, chicken, I'm coming, I'm coming, my darling chicken, my galina preciosa, arrivo subito, un altro fuego, yeah, un'altra padella, poi un poco di butiro, anche una sciungia, una sgracca, un poco di aio, una scigola, un peverun, vai sbrisa, sbrisa, vai che bella boia, gira, gira, boia, gagina! devo dire che hai ragione, è anche bello. Talk! Oh God! I, I caught off the head. A knife. Un uovo. An egg. 
Look at it. Inside the chicken, there was a little egg just there by the end, by his ox. Look at that. What a lovely egg. It was just there. Oh, 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 oh. Flora, here. Ah, let's clean it up. A little bit corradella. This I don't like. No, this is too strong. But firm, firm. Now I must do something very important. First of all, try to is a little bit stage. I'm so sorry. I get bump into the thing. I need to take uh, something uh, like a sausage to bet it inside. A piece of uh, some vegetables and a boy of. <laughs> hey, the meat is already ready. <laughs> but what a big chicken I have here. What a big kitchen. It's too big, this kitchen. I can't move around very much. Now, most important of all, I before to cook the chicken, I need to take a needle, then a cotton, put it inside, make a little knot, and then you have to sew it. You can't cook the chicken without sewing it. Otherwise, when you're going to cook it, all the flavor goes up into the air. But if you stick to it, you put stitches inside. When you take out the chicken, it's so gorgeous, marvelous, full of flavor. And you say that when you go down, you eat it, it's such a bell. The needle. I got my needle stuck into my lips. Vai quel polastro. Ehi là, vai che bello, vai gira tutto. Oh che magnata che mi vuoi fare? A vai stronzone che vega tutta la carne per primo. Wa vieu, wa pshu, wa pshu, wa wa pshu. Ehi, watch out! What up, dude? What a kiss he can hear. What a shit a bit. What can we talk in a question? And Polaxo, a scot, and folk it on. Pshaw. Why? Pshaw. Yeah. Pshaw. 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 La. Yep. Pluff. No, the pant was here. Sorry. I was making a mistake. Yep. Pshaw. 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 Yep. Pshaw. Pshaw. Bluff! <laughs> yeah, I got shot. Why got a shit? Hey, hey! Yeah! 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 Oh, damn. I'm stuck. Oh, uh, that's too much. Yeah! Yeah! Drop it, man. Yeah! 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 Oh, well, che farfumo, guarda che roba, che manzara che mi fa con questo, a questo proprio, guarda, me lo mangio tutto. Yeah! <laughs> Bois, 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 euh, bois, 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 Eaten the damn stick. Oh, la canela. Oh, mania la canela. Lua, boa. 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 It's not true. No ever ta. I did not eat anything. No no manyao niente. It was only a nightmare. I didn't eat anything. 
Allora bagliamo dietro, stai solo un incubo, un insognamento tremendo, non ho bagliato niente, stai un incubo al Neumann, lo vengo a se... Godita che ho presa, l'ho cioppata! <ride> Le senti di noi, come sbisica! Oh, eh, oh. Look at it! How big it is! What a monster! Oh, what, what, yeah. oh che bello! Grosso! Big! Grasso! Fat! No, che bello, guarda questo, look at these legs, look at it, an arm, a piece of arm, oh, oh. Oh. look at this one, I'm going to eat it all, oh, oh, oh. Oh. look at those flies, the little wings, oh. there are so many wings, eh? look at these wings, look, look, uh, they are so spicy, so Crocky, so sweet. Look, there are even some of the people who throw them away. Dumb fool. They do not understand anything about meals. Look at this. Now this, I'm going to eat it all. A bit of salt. <laughs> yeah! Hey! What a feast! <laughs> Ciao Gerardo. Oh. È difficile, è difficile, è difficile. È difficile, è difficile. È the last one, è il no water, no? You drank all my water. You, you drank, eh, ma me l'hanno bevuta tutta. Ah, c'è tu. Grazie. No. Buonasera amici, ciao, state bene? Are you alright? Sì, va bene, grazie, ciao. Grazie, grazie. Buonasera, buonasera, buonasera. Allora facciamo suonare i musici. O vuoi che finisca con Bonifacio? Sì, subito adesso. Perché sei stanco? No, non sono stanco. How are you making it up without, without the cell for uh, all this time? Come sta andando per te? Ha capito, non capisce. Ma lui capisce inglese? Sì. Allora, facciamo ancora un pezzo. So this last piece is the Giullarata, the storytelling of one of the most powerful pope in the history of the church, especially in the Middle Ages, is the story of Bonifacio VIII, Bonifax VIII. This pope is the inventor of nepotism. The word nepotism was brought out after this pope. In fact, he had all his brother, all his family, lovers, 
son's nephew, distributed all the most powerful places in the church in the 14th century, 13,000 to all. Pope Bonifacio VIII was a member of the Gaetano family, a very a strong old family who owns much of the land uh, all over the central of Italy especially. And this Pope was also known for his love of procession, going to procession. He was very far ahead of Mr. Trump to display wealth and richness. He used to love to go into procession uh, covering gold and diamonds and rings uh, and big huts with uh, full of gems. And uh, there was a story they were saying that uh, on the other side of the River Tiber, uh, River Tiber in Rome, that everybody knew exactly where he was positioned because of the glittering that was coming up from his, uh, from the from the center where he was. So just to say how much he was. He loved to go into procession. He has invented pro style of procession that was never done ever before in those days. Uh, with thousands of clergymen and priests and bishops and nuns with standards and flags and big baldacchini like, you know, walking all over the places. And obviously the people couldn't miss this opportunity to make fun out of this pope. And how do, how it, it is the irony, how to represent this Pope in those days? Come viene rappresentato questo Papa in quei giorni? Nel massimo del suo splendore, in the magnificent of his days. Thinking that he is going to a procession, but in the meantime, while he's walking into a procession, all of a sudden, on the other side of the street, another procession arrives. And who is in that procession? Jesus Christ himself. He's going off on the other side. He has a cross, a wood, a wooden piece on his arm, and he's going up to the Golgotha mountain, where he's going to be nailed. Of course, it's a, an anachronism, of course. It's, it's just, obviously, nobody can say that really a pope ever met Jesus. It's just to show the irony to underline the great two differences between these two people. The Pope who's supposed to represent Jesus and his father on this earth and the real guy who comes about. And this is uh, extraordinary what, will, what goes on between these two people. Pope Boniface VIII meeting Jesus. He starts off with a song. Uh, a Gregorian chant. A Gregorian chant who was found in Sardinia, which is of Catalan origin. I don't know if you are aware, but Sardinia, the north part of Sardinia, was, was conquered by the Catalan, and they stayed there for nearly three centuries, 300 years. In the north of Sardinia, there are still, uh, you can hear the pure language of Catalan that not even in Catalonia itself today is, is spoken anymore. This song goes more or less like this. A day of the great judgment will come on this earth. And we will be doing your service. The world entire, the sky will become a huge ball and will collapse down onto the ground, making everything in fire. And a big hole will be breaking to the ground and we all will be end up into it. Amen. Not bad, is it? For a song. Imagine you going to church in those days when it was coming out. Oh, God, I'm, I'm still alive. Always, always feel down onto the people the power of the sin so you can better govern them and milk them and put the bastard, the cows, upon their shoulder so you can command and direct as you like. No, it's not mine, this is really it's from Voltaire. I give it to you cheaply, for nothing. Thank you. Please. Party, guys. Fallo seriamente. The Pope sings and prepares himself. There are four choir boys 
who helps him to give him all the instrument to prepare himself into the procession. And all of a sudden, there is one of these choir boys that does everything wrong, gives the wrong things, and above all, is stone deaf. When if you hear him shouting at him, stone deaf is him that he is on to. And he, and he will go to, and he will promise him that he's going to do something very bad to him if he carries on like this. But to, in order to understand this joke, you must understand what this Pope did. Now, just to, you, I'm sure you are aware, you know who is Dante Alighieri, do you? Alighieri, Dante Alighieri. You know him, Dante Alighieri? You know Dante Alighieri? You know Dante Alighieri? Well, he has put this Pope into hell before his death. Just imagine, is the unique case in the world that someone was put into hell when, while still alive. So why? What did he do? Because he, they were living at the same time. He knew very well this Pope, so that's why he did this. Because this Pope was really crazy. In order to gain power, he made war, he, con he conquered territory, he destroyed city and everything. He, he was really mad. And uh, not himself, he sent soldiers, of course, mercenaries, right? And he had a group of mercenaries that were called Les Esperandor, poetic word. They were just riding their horses and they were wearing, I don't know what you call in English this, to, to eh? Speron, spare, to, to, they were gold. These Les Esperandor were made out of all the rubbish of the armies throughout all over Europe. They were hired by the Pope. And what's happening one day in a city in the central of Italy called Cesena, in Emilia, this city was, uh, they didn't like what the Pope sent to them. The, 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 the representative of the Pope, it was not loved by the people. And they tried to uh, make an accommodation to adjust, but the, the guy didn't listen, didn't understand the, the turmoil and the anguish of the people. And if, nevertheless, he, instead of trying to pacify and trying to get to an agreement and so on, he even increased his, um, his uh, dictators, imposing in the end at the people not to uh, meet each other into the street. At that moment, people went mad. And uh, uh, with a community of Frere who was living nearby, they managed to get this legate, delegate of the Pope to go away from the city with the, uh, some of, the, of these soldiers. Without killing anybody, without making any fuss, they managed to send him away. He, come, he goes to, back to Rome and he tells this to Boniface VIII. And what Boniface does, send a letter, send another delegate, make a, no, he sends an army of these people, Les Esperandor. These people arrive in Cesena and they kill 2,000 people, citizen, armless citizen in the city. And not only this, he catches, they catch the frere, the monks who were organizing the protesters, they tie them up behind their shoulder and they nail up onto the door of the five biggest door of the city of Cesena. Still, some 60 years ago, 70 years ago, just after the war, during the, uh, the meetings of the people, uh, fair fiestas, uh, uh, remembrance and so on, there were still songs who were saying, remember is this uh, fact of the people nailed by the tongue to the door of the city. They, some song that they were going like, oh, Pope, by Bonifax VIII, Malarbeta Canaia, te vai scrisanti il guscio che vai, vai che la lingua del frai che pendula sul portone, vai smarbeto Bonifax VIII, canaia sfrasin velada, vai che vei se sfrigge da vai da suda dei, inta la notte, inta la sgrisa della nebbia, vai te sem Bonifax Pope Maledito. Questo per dirvi how to say, how still in the memory of the people he will say it and with their own dialect in their own language. Of course, the people use irony to describe <laughs> people like that. So the Pope start the process of getting dressed, helped by the choirs, by the, by the people, by the boys, clear boys. Come si chiamano i chierici? Clear boys? What do you call the people who? Eh? Abbatiz. And in English? Alter boy, bravo, alter boy, yes. Alter boy e abati. Hanzur, danzi 
I'm going to battle, to fight. Give me the light one. I'm going just for a walk. All in this evening, all in this evening, all in this evening. All in this evening, all in this evening. It's a page, it's a page, it's a page. The mirror, the big one. Give me the mirror. All in this evening, all in this evening. Oh, damn, what a... The guanto, the gloves, please give me the gloves. I cannot go into a procession without the gloves. No, you fool, give me that glove. On a the other one, I have one only hand. What's the matter with you? Give me the other gloves. No, I have to go down. It's so disgraceful. <laughs> The ring, the caution with the rings. Give me the rings. Oh, then look at it. Look at this one. You can even look at it. Look, green. Look at that color. Oh, this. Oh, this. Oh, this. Oh, look at purples. Look at this color. You, you can't even look at it. It disturbs your eyes. Ha, ha, this sweet. This is una noche. A nut, a walnut. <laughs> oh, it's too big. It's for the big tom. Ha <laughs> ha. Mantello, the cloak, the big one. Come on, lift it up. The one with the gold and the diamond. And please lift it. What's the matter with you, altar boys? What's what's wrong with you today? <laughs> uh, you don't like to sing. You don't like to lift up the mantles. Eh? Do I have to do everything by myself? Hey, what's the matter with you? You, you don't like to sing today? Yes, yes, you, come on. You, first voice. Please, let me hear it, come on. How the mission is this Keep the tune. Second one. Laude to me, Jesus, you know, Jesus. Third one. La de di de muse mi no i i i. Fourth. La de mi si. La de mi. Stone dead. Stun up. Chito. Silenzio. Shut up. Don't sing. You will never become a priest. Always an altar boy you will be. You can never say mess. You can't sing. Shut up. Now you, one, two, three, four, without singing, please, lift up the cloak and put it on my shoulder. All right? Come on. Give it. All right. Stop it. Right. Push it now, you damn. Hold on. me singing now. It's louder. Hold on. me Push it now. Hold it. it. It's Oh, what a hell of a job to be a pope. <laughs> oh, come on, give a hand. Quick, the elixir of the Who stood on it with his feet on my mantle, on my cloak? Oh, damn. Stone deaf. Get down. You don't sing. You're stone deaf and you mount on you with your feet on my cloak. Be careful. Keep an eye on you. 
Come on now, lift it up all together. Sing in it all together, lift it up. Come on. Watch out. Stone deaf. What's the matter with you? You don't think you're stone deaf and you are pushing me. Can't you wait, everybody, before you start? You have to sing first, then balance yourself, take a breath, and then all together you would like me to go right crack with my face into the mud, yes? With my heart, big heart, right there on my throat, as to suffocate. You would like eh? everybody laughing. <laughs> Be careful, be careful, I take your tongue, I put it right there, an hammer and a nail, and pew, 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 pew. Stand back, you fool! First you have to balance yourself, second, then you take a breath, and three, and four, and after you can come. I am a Pope, not a chariot. Oh, this non se parte subito, you won't go right now. Stony the same unto here no vite vevi e che se parte subito in sembian demo in the dominum meo vindrai toti certamen vindrai un rei vestite hey Kierikos what's the matter with you altar boys where are you all going you leave me alone here the peep the pope in the street what Another procession against mine. And who, who is in this procession? Who? Jesus. Who is this Jesus? Damn you. Jesus Christ got two names. Put it together, I get confused. No. What is it? Oh, no. Look at him. It's him. Oh, good. Look at him. Oh, poor things. Look at the way he's dressed. Look. Look, he's got a spine crown around him with blood coming all down. Look at it, they spat on him. Look, now I understand why they call him a poor Christ. Take me away. I don't want to see him. Take me away. He makes me sick. Don't, eh? What? What do you say? It will be better for me to go with, to meet him. Why? Ah, for the people. Oh, the people say, oh, those two people, those two are, are like each other. They know each other. Oh, you're such a clever boy. Here, take, take, take the hat, take the mantle, take it, take the rings, take everything. Don't, he's a crazy one. He doesn't like to see people like me dressed up in gold with rings and so on. Then give me some dirt. I have to dirt myself. He only likes thief, prostitute, and rubbish. He, he doesn't like it. People like me, stand up. I'm, I'm going alone. Don't need you to accompany me, okay? Stand back. Back, come on. Hello. How are you, Jesus? Come on, Jesus. Eh? Chi sono me? <laughs> non me ha riconosciuto. He did not recognize me. Jesus, I'm Pope. Pope Bonifax the Ace. Prince Roman Ecclesi. Eh? What? what you, you forgot? He forgot who, who is the Pope. <laughs> what? Jesus, but don't, don't you remember? You said to. Oh, what do you mean? Yes, you said to Peter. Peter, now we have a church. And you will be the first head of the church. And then after you, there will be another pope. And then a pope, and then a pope, another pope, a pope, a pope, a pope way. No. You never told Jesus this. <laughs> oh, the, the eh? what, what, what did I do? Did I, did I kill some monks? No, it's not true. 
Jesus, no, he's not true. He's a liar. He's an imposter. There's some jealousy around. No, Jesus is not true. I love the friar. I love the monks. Jesus is not true. Please go and get me a friar. No, Jesus, I love every morning. As soon as I wake up, I kiss the bronc. The, the truth, the, get me a monk, please. I say, it's a, but detect me from the tongue with the door. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me, I'm the worst man on this planet, on this earth. I'm full of sin. I'm, I'm so, Robbie, forgive me for such a, a cruelty. Sin. But please, Jesus, allow me to help you. Let me and you be seen by all the people. Allow me to help you. Let me carry your cross. No, do not pull me away. Jesus, please, allow me to help you. Jesus, I'm so strong. I carry such a cloak and mantles and a hat. No, don't push me. Get away, Chirineos. No, please, Jesus, do not push me away. No, Jesus, I'm so strong. Let me help you, Jesus. No, Jesus, talk. A big kick up the ass of the pope. A kick to me? Are you mad? Oh, if only your father would come to know about it. Oh, you, you are a prince of the donkey. King of the donkey you are. I am the Pope. Bonifax, Prince Maxim Ecclesia, Fuete, Damel Capello, give me a heart, give me back my mantle, give me the rings, look at it, Jesus, you can even look at it as it's glittering so much, get us, chief of the donkeys you are, I am the Pope, Bonifax, glory, hallelujah, sing with me, cantare, loud and Bonifax, in the name of the how the British in the name of Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Okay. okay. That's, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, if you want to come, there will be again this group of musicians. Oh, Saturday, sorry, Saturday. Johan Padan and the Discovery of America. It's a story. Well, uh, that one. Johan Padan and the Discovery of America. Johan Padan e alla descoperta delle Americhe. And it's a, an epic journey. Uh, seen uh, the Discovery of America, not seen by the kings, the prince and by, by seen by the, the, the last people of, on, on the ship, the rank, the sailors, who told their stories, but all their stories have been kept secretly into the library of Madrid, till George Sand, the famous son of the writer Dominic Sand, discovered a lot of this test, and in 19th century, the beginning of 19th century, some of these stories were revealed for the first time. And all these Joan Pedan Discovery of America are traced and put together by Dario Fo in a hilarious and dramatic at the same time journey to America by those people who discovered. And today is a very great fashion about America. They are trying to dismantle the, the Columbus statue. Have you read about it? about uh, Christopher, it's a ridiculous thing to do, really, you know, because uh, other things has to be destroyed, not Columbus statue, really. I'm, I'm not a fanatic Columbus person at all, but really, it's just really eating a wrong target, really. <laughs> the, the target is, is much higher than that. But it's always like this, you pick on this little one, the one that's probably a, appear harmless to get, uh, to try to make fuss to throw dust into the eyes of the people. Okay, I see you Saturday. Thank you very much.